Good morning, dear colleagues. My name is Tarek al -Tawil, and I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons at the National Institute of Neuromotor System in Cairo. I'm presenting a case report on converting arthrodesis to total hip arthroplasty. Arthrodesis in itself could be a final solution for painful, badly affected joints which do not respond to any conservative treatment. The indications for total hip in patients with previous arthrodesis could be back pain or epsilateral knee pain or both, painful pseudoarthrosis, females for social reasons, and those patients who uh, seek a better quality of life. This is the case we'll be discussing today, and this is a 56-year-old man when I uh, met him first time, and he tells me, me that he had this arthrodesis for 28 years. <clears throat> he was doing quite well, but actually in the last few years, he started complaining of low back pain and epsilateral knee pain. And actually, um, I uh, discussed the matter with him and I offered him uh, to have a total hip replacement to take this down and to regain the uh, movement of this hip again. Uh, this would minimize the stresses on his back and on the epsilateral knee. And before we do this, uh, uh, we have to do a thorough clinical examination and the proper assessment especially for the hip abductors, and this could be done clinically by uh, just palpating the muscles, asking the patient to abduct his hip. Of course, there will be no movement, but definitely the muscles will uh, contract with the uh, trial of abduction. Also, we have to do all investigations to be sure that there is no dormant infection and sometimes bone scan may be needed. Um, as we don't know uh, what or how the operation uh, was done, then definitely to know the proper uh, geography uh, of this joint, uh, we need a CT scan. However, The operation itself, uh, the operation itself is uh, quite difficult. Actually, uh, there is difficult uh, draping, difficult exposure, and uh, the neck osteotomy is too difficult as there is no movement at the hip. And uh, even after the neck osteotomy, in a trial to identify the hip center is a problem, and you might need. Uh, image and transfer with you in theater to have a uh, proper uh, center of the um, astabula. Um, again, while doing the reaming, identifying the depth of the uh, astabulum may not be easy, and uh, while you are reaming, uh, maybe you use a very small uh, drill bit and uh, using the um, depth measure or depth gauge to know whether you are uh, 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 deep inside or uh, not. We have just discussed the uh, draping before and uh, now regarding the exposure, actually the recommended exposure for this uh, situation having an arthrodesed hip that you want to convert into a total hip arthroblast is through a transtrochanteric uh, approach. Uh, but in this case, the exposure was uh, uh, through a lateral approach without osteotomy to the greater troch, and actually it's uh, uh, quite difficult to do. Uh, this you should be very careful. and. Uh, you, uh, when you expose the uh, neck, you just use two homans, one above and one uh, below as usual. And um, as the uh, neck is exposed, the 
uh, osteotomy <clears throat> preferably and carefully should be in uh, the middle of the neck as possible and uh, this uh, will preserve the uh, uh, bone attached to the acetabulum uh, till you know uh, the whereabouts of this uh, area and uh, later on you may uh, make uh, a final neck osteotomy close to the uh, acetabulum and that is uh, the on the other side what's needed uh, from the height of the neck for the uh, femoral uh, part this is um, what was done actually and uh, to a great extent I think we uh, succeeded to uh, locate the acetabulum and uh, we used a cemented uh, cup for this uh, patient and you can notice the uh, keyholes the cement keyholes which were uh, small but uh, definitely more than three uh, this is the uh, lateral uh, view you will see a better x-rays than this one when we uh, go ahead this is the lateral view and I believe this is a quite acceptable uh, situation at the moment and this is the man few months after his operation and he can bend his uh, hip to almost uh, I would say 90 degrees but uh, what astonished me actually that this patient tells me that he uh, doesn't feel that he really uh, improved the range of movement or he has uh, a better range of movement and I believe this is to uh, the almost complete loss of uh, proprioception so uh, we continued uh, forget exercises for this uh, man and uh, he had uh, intensive training uh, for the hip for the flexors extensors and abductors trying to uh, regain uh, proprioception this um, photograph is uh, three years after his operation and now on the uh, left hand side he is standing on the uh, operation side and you can see that he can uh, nicely balance his uh, hip on the affected side having good uh, uh, power of his abductors this is uh, x-ray six and a half years uh, following his operation and I believe um, everything is quite uh, in place no uh, osteolysis or uh, loosening of any of the uh, components and this is a wider uh, view uh, to compare both uh, sides uh, this is a close-up to the uh, hip and no signs of loosening and uh, the proximal part of the uh, femoral component uh, fitted quite nicely no losing and uh, this is to compare the early post-op x-ray to the uh, lateral view of the six and a half uh, years post-op and the uh, AP comparison and uh, that is uh, the, the x-ray of his knee six and a half years following his operation definitely arthritic and painful but he uh, could tolerate uh, this and feels that it is uh, the pain is easier than uh, before the operation and this is the uh, man and we uh, as we are going to see see six and a half years for his operation and uh, we uh, can see him uh, walking in a more or less uh, normal way quite acceptable actually and he uh, can uh, sit and stand up uh, independently this is now 
uh, nine years following his uh, operation. And uh, as you can see, again, with this uh, larger view, no signs of loosening, whether of the uh, acetabular or femoral component. And this is the man again. And uh, this is now nine years post op And we can see him walking quite happy with the result, actually. Again, he can sit, no problem, and take off the chair. And this is uh, 14 years after the operation. This is the, the maximum follow-up <clears throat> that I could follow uh, this uh, man. Still, if you look at the X-ray, no signs of loosening, no signs of osteolysis, and on the uh, lateral view as well. And I believe for this uh, type of operation, this is uh, quite satisfactory uh, result. And this is a closer view uh, for the uh, hip, uh, AP, and lateral. And you can see the details actually quite apparent here. Uh, but definitely and unfortunately, his knee uh, uh, progressed to a severe osteoarthritis. And I advise him actually to have a total knee uh, replacement as well. And this is now the man um, after 14 years. And you can see that he uh, got older now. <clears throat> Definitely still uh, walking. Quite happy and he can sit down and can uh, sit shown that uh, at still 90 degrees flexion did it again anymore and he is uh, walking and actually um, I just had some few more years follow up over the telephone but uh, he did it uh, show up after uh, that and then uh, still I would believe he is standing on the affected side uh, 14 years is a very uh, good result with the radiological findings of uh, this operation after 14 years I believe still this joint can uh, stand the test of time for another more few years to come. Thank you very much for watching.